What happens when brilliant engineers get a truly unlimited budget? You get a V10 that revs so fast it needs a digital tachometer, a W16 with 10 radiators, and a humble four-cylinder that can handle a thousand horsepower. These aren't just engines, they're monuments to mechanical ambition. Stick around as we count down the 12 most gloriously over-engineered engines ever made. Number 12, Rolls-Royce Bentley L-Series V8. Kicking off our countdown is an engine that simply refused to die. The legendary Rolls-Royce Bentley L-Series V8. Picture this, an engine launched in 1959 that through sheer force of will and endless refinement remained in production for over six decades. The core design was ancient by modern standards, a sturdy iron block, push rods, and just two valves per cylinder. Yet, engineers with an almost religious devotion to the design kept bolting on modern technology. They added twin turbochargers, fuel injection, and enough sound insulation to hush a hurricane. By its final run in 2020, this venerable six and three quarter liter V8 was producing 530 horsepower and a colossal 811 pound feet of torque all while idling so quietly you'd swear it was off. The goal was never raw speed. It was about effortless, silken power and unparalleled refinement. The catch, the complexity and cost. Every gasket seemed to cost more than a decent used car, and the oil pan held a staggering 12 quarts of lubricant. This was an engine built on the philosophy. If it ain't broke, keep adding boost and make it smoother. That is the Rolls-Royce way a commitment to luxury and engineering excess that defies all practicality, making it perfectly, if excessively, engineered for a car that emphasizes waftability over outright performance. Number 11, Volkswagen 5.0 liter V 10 TDI. Next is a monument to diesel insanity. Found in the Touareg SUV and Phaeton sedan, this wasn't just an engine. It was an industrial power plant crammed under the hood of a passenger vehicle. Its two banks of five cylinders were gear driven, eliminating timing belts or chains, but introducing a new layer of mind-numbing complexity. Producing a locomotive-like 553 pound-feet of torque, it could pull a Boeing 747, a feat VW famously demonstrated. The dark side, virtually any major service, like changing an alternator or turbo, required dropping the entire engine and drivetrain from the vehicle. The engine bay was so densely packed that mechanics dreaded seeing one roll into their shop. It was German engineering at its most ambitious and intimidating, proving that over-engineering isn't limited to high-revving gasoline engines. Number 10, Ford 5.2 Voodoo V8. At number 10, we journey to the heart of American muscle, but with a European twist, the Ford 5.2 liter Voodoo V8 from the Mustang GT350. When you hear about a V8 that screams to 8,250 RPM, you probably picture a Ferrari, not a Ford Mustang. But that's exactly what the Voodoo delivered, thanks to its flat plane crankshaft, a design typically found in exotic supercars. This layout allows for a higher red line, but also introduces massive vibration challenges. To stop this 5.2 liter monster from vibrating itself into a pile of expensive scrap, Ford's engineers went to unbelievable lengths. They added numerous mass dampers throughout the car just to make it livable. The result was 526 horsepower of pure, naturally aspirated fury, delivered with an exhaust note that sounds less like a traditional V8 and more like a symphony of mechanical aggression. On the track, it's a revelation. In the real world, it could be a headache. Owners reported significant oil consumption, and the unique crank harmonics could cause serious issues if the engine was lugged at low RPM. Practical? Not in the slightest. Awesome? Absolutely. It was an engine built for the thrill of the red line, a testament to pushing a familiar platform into exotic territory. Number 9. Mitsubishi 4 G63T Ninth place goes to the little four-cylinder that could, and did, handle horsepower figures that would make much larger engines weep. We're talking about the legendary Mitsubishi 4 G63T. Found in icons like the Lancer Revolution, this 2.0-liter inline 4 was a marvel of overbuilding. While competitors chase lightweight aluminum blocks, Mitsubishi defiantly cast the 4G63T in iron, creating a foundation so robust it became the stuff of legend. Then, they bolted on a turbocharger that looked like a watermelon had taken up residence under the hood. The factory intercooler plumbing was a labyrinth of pipes, a plumber's fever dream designed to keep intake air cool under immense pressure. Stock, this engine produced around 300 horsepower, which was already impressive but its true genius was its inherent strength. 
The block and internals were so stout that tuners routinely doubled or even tripled that power output on the stock components. It wasn't complexity for its own sake. It was an engine built with an absurd margin of safety, designed to endure the brutal stresses of rally racing. When a motor from a humble Econobox can shame purpose-built V8s with its power potential, you know the engineers weren't just building a car, they were showing off. Number 8. Audi 5.2 liter V10 FSI. Coming in at number 8 is the heart of a supercar masquerading in a luxury sedan. The Audi 5.2 liter FSI V10. Shared with the Lamborghini Gallardo, this engine brought Italian drama to cars like the Audi S6 and S8. It delivered an intoxicating 450 horsepower with a soundtrack that belonged on a racetrack, not in an executive's parking spot. However, transplanting this thoroughbred engine came with enormous challenges. To combat carbon buildup on the intake valves, a notorious issue with direct injection engines required intensive and costly cleaning. But the real terror for owners was the timing chain service. The chains were located at the back of the engine, meaning the entire powertrain had to be dropped for what should be routine maintenance on a lesser motor. It was a glorious, high-revving masterpiece that offered supercar performance with the potential for supercar-sized repair bills. Number 7. Porsche Mesger Flat 6 Coming in at number 7 is an engine that not only conquered the 24 hours of Le Mans, but then casually offered to commute to work every day. A staple in high-performance 911S like the GT3 and Turbo, this engine was a direct descendant of the Porsche 911 GT1 race engine. It featured dry sump lubrication to prevent oil starvation during high G-cornering and gear-driven camshafts for superior precision and reliability. It even boasted separate oil scavenge pumps for each cylinder bank. To keep this rear-mounted masterpiece performing optimally, it required multiple cooling circuits. In the 996 Turbo, it produced a robust 414 horsepower and could happily lap a racetrack all day before idling in city traffic without protest. But this race spread durability came at a price. A simple spark plug change could become a monumental task, sometimes requiring the entire engine to be dropped for access. The timing chains were buried so deep you'd practically need a map to find them. Yet, Porsche kept this engine in production for over a decade, a testament to its fundamental brilliance and unwavering reliability, even if its service bills could be terrifying. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Number 6. Chrysler 3rd Gen Hemi – Hellcat Demon At number 6, we have Detroit's unapologetic love letter to gratuitous power, the Chrysler 3rd Gen Hemi especially in its Hellcat and Demon forms. This isn't just an engine, it's a seismic event. Engineers took a stout 6.2-liter Hemi V8 and bolted on a massive supercharger, 2.4 liters for the Hellcat and an even larger 2.7 liters for the Demon. The result? A mind-bending 840 horsepower on high-octane fuel in the Demon, enough to lift the front wheels right off the pavement. To keep the cast iron block from twisting itself into a pretzel, Chrysler reinforced it with forged pistons and sodium-filled exhaust valves for better heat dissipation. The fuel system is so potent, it can flow 1.36 gallons per minute at rated power. The intercooler system alone is a marvel, featuring two separate coolant loops to manage the extreme heat. The complexity is off the charts. Swapping spark plugs is an 8-hour ordeal because the cylinder heads are nestled so close to the firewall. The Hellcat and Demon engines are about a visceral assault on the senses, an engine that asks, how much power is too much? And then answers, we're not there yet. Number 5. Volkswagen Phaeton W12 Fifth place takes us to the realm of German luxury and audacity with the Volkswagen Phaeton W12. This engine answered a question few dared to ask. What if we crammed two narrow-angle VR6 engines together? The result was an incredibly compact 6.0-liter W12 an engine that fit 12 cylinders into the space of a traditional V8. This packaging miracle, however, came with staggering complexity. To keep this dense powerhouse cool, it required a complex cooling system with multiple radiators and two water pumps, and its oil system held 13 quarts. The true engineering headache, however, was the timing chain system. Located deep within the engine's V, any routine maintenance on the chains or their guides automatically became a full engine out service a 16-hour job for a skilled technician. While it delivered power with the smoothness of silk on glass, its service requirements became a running joke among mechanics. It was a masterpiece of packaging, but a nightmare of maintenance, embodying the very definition of over-engineering for the sake of luxury. Number 4. Toyota 2 JZ GTE At number 4, we celebrate a legend from Japan. This 3.0-liter inline-six 
famous from the MK4 Supra, is the poster child for accidental over-engineering. Toyota cast the block from iron, a decision that proved to be its greatest strength. They added a sophisticated sequential twin-turbo setup, but crucially, they understressed everything. The factory's 276 horsepower rating, a result of a gentleman's agreement among Japanese automakers, was merely a suggestion. The block itself is so robust it's often described as being built like a diesel engine. Tuners have pushed these engines past 1,000 horsepower on the stock block and crank. The crankshaft is forged, and the cylinder head flows enough air to make it incredibly efficient for high horsepower applications. The complexity wasn't in its core design, but in the tight packaging. Changing the rear turbocharger without removing the subframe is a job that will test anyone's patience. The 2JZ GTE proves that sometimes overkill is the perfect amount. Decades later, it remains a go-to for anyone chasing immense horsepower with surprising reliability. Number 3. Lexus LFA V10 Taking the bronze medal is an engine tuned like a musical instrument by the masters at Yamaha, the Lexus LFA V10. This is a mechanical symphony. The naturally aspirated 4.8-liter V10 was engineered to rev from idle to its 9,000 RPM redline in a mind-boggling six-tenths of a second. This response was so instantaneous that Lexus had to use a digital tachometer because a physical needle simply couldn't keep up. Every component was a lesson in precision, from its lightweight titanium valves to its forged connecting rods. The intake was tuned to produce a whale reminiscent of a Formula One car. Each LFA V10 was hand-assembled in a sterile clean room, ensuring absolute perfection. The downside? Lexus famously lost money on every LFA sold, a testament to the astronomical cost of development. If you cracked the intricate carbon fiber intake manifold, the replacement part would cost more than a new Toyota Camry. Was it over-engineered? To a poetic degree. Was it worth it? One blip of the throttle and its spine-tingling shriek would be a resounding yes. Number 2. Chevrolet LS7 Our runner-up is America's brilliant answer to European Exotica. This 7.0-liter, 427 cubic inch, naturally aspirated V8, found in the C6 Corvette Z06, redefined what a pushrod engine could do. The LS7 featured a lightweight aluminum block with titanium connecting rods and CNC ported cylinder heads. It redlined at a remarkable 7,000 RPM, a figure previously unheard of for such a large pushrod V8, allowing it to produce 505 horsepower without any forced induction. GM even equipped it with a dry sump lubrication system lifted directly from its race cars. But this performance engineering had its quirks. The most notorious is the valve drop issue, where a flaw related to the valve guides could lead to catastrophic engine failure. This became a well-documented concern for owners, with many opting for preventative fixes that could cost thousands. While it appeared simple on the outside, a classic American V8, the LS7 was a Swiss Army knife of advanced materials and race-derived technologies a glorious example of pushing a proven concept to its absolute extreme. Number 1. Bugatti W16 And now, for the undisputed king of mechanical madness. This isn't just an engine, it's a force of nature. Imagine taking two narrow-angle V8 engines, joining them to a single crankshaft, and then adding four turbochargers. The numbers are staggering. 64 valves, four camshafts, and a cooling system requiring no fewer than 10 radiators to manage the immense heat. At full tilt, the engine in the Veyron inhales immense amounts of air and will burn through a full tank of premium fuel in minutes. The cost of the assembly alone is astronomical. Routine maintenance is an epic undertaking. If a single turbo oil line cracks, the entire rear section of the car must be removed for service, requiring specialized tools and an equally immense bill. But when an engine produces up to 1,825 horsepower and propels a road car to over 260 miles per hour, practicality is irrelevant. This is the engine that looked at the word overkill and considered it a starting point. Its engineering elevated to an art form, a monument to what happens when ambition knows no limits. From indestructible tuner legends to hypercar monuments of excess, these engines prove that sometimes overkill is just right. Which one would you own? Let us know below. And if you enjoyed the content, smash that like button and subscribe for more auto content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.